Hello everyone and welcome to my channel RPG Retro Reviews. In this video I'm going to do something a bit different and talk about the technical aspects of setting up an LCD projector for your D&D game. This was a topic of discussion on the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Facebook group that I'm a part of and given I spent the last six months using a projector successfully in my group I thought I'd go ahead and break down what it takes to set one up. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hardware you need, the software requirements, some detail on the technical aspects of setting everything up, and then using the projector in play. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. This is really where the expense comes in, as the first thing you will need to invest in is an LCD projector. I can tell you that eBay does have some decent off-brand models that will work great for this, but the most important thing you want to look at when buying an LCT projector is the lumens. Lumens is a measure of the projector's brightness, and the more lumens, the better. Things will show up on the table. This is why cell phone projectors simply aren't feasible. They don't project a high enough resolution image and brightness, or lumens, for a decent image. $200 models are around 55 lumens, whereas the full-size projector I got from eBay for $400 has 5,000 lumens. There's really no contest here. Consider that you will probably be using this device for years and years, and of course you can watch movies on it. It's worth the additional expense to get a projector that is more than adequate for the job you want it to do for you. Of course, the more money you lay out, the better quality picture, higher resolution, and so on, you're going to get. But, for my purposes and budget, this one has proven to be more than adequate. You also need a way to mount the projector to the ceiling. Once again, eBay has some very inexpensive options here. You need to be able to adjust the angle of your projector from side to side and up and down, and then secure it in that position for it to hit the table and focus properly. A secure mount is a must here, so if you've spent the money on the projector, don't skimp on the mounting hardware. You will also need two computers, one to act as the host and a second to act as a client, but I'll go into that in more detail in just a moment. The more important thing is that your client computer have two display capability, which most computers do, so this shouldn't be an issue unless you are working with an older model computer. You will also need a mirror and some mounting hardware to angle the projector onto the table. You will not be able to project the image directly unless you have a very high ceiling as the projector needs to be a certain distance from the surface in order to focus properly. Fortunately, I found a very easy and inexpensive solution. Home Depot sells a pack of six one foot square decorative mirror tiles for only 10 bucks. You can get the thick particle board for around two dollars. I had it cut in the store to the appropriate size for no cost and used the double-sided mounting tape for the tiles to mount it to the board as shown here. Then some hooks, chain, and so on, and you can have everything you need for less than $20. I love key rings. They're so handy. I use key rings to attach everything so that I could adjust the angle. You will not want a strict 45 degree angle mounting here as the projector itself sits at a slight downward angle on the mount. From these images here, everything becomes more apparent. The chain key ring combination allows you to make fine adjustments to the angle to get the best angle and pitch for the projector. The disadvantage to this setup I found is that when someone walks upstairs, since this setup is in my basement, it shakes the image just a little bit. Also, on the back of the projector itself, there is an adjustment for what is called keystone correction. Basically, you won't have a strictly rectangular image on the table, but a slightly trapezoidal shape to compensate for the angle of projection. Focusing the projector is a bit tricky and takes some time to get the best picture. It can try your patience a bit, so I'm warning you now. For your projection surface, I recommend a piece of off-white vinyl material, which you can get inexpensively at the fabric store for a few dollars, and then cut to the appropriate size. Once you have all this set up, you'll need to run a VGA cable from your computer to the projector. 
Once again, eBay was the solution as I was I was able to get a 15 foot VGA extension cable for around five dollars with free shipping. Lastly, when you reflect the image onto your table, everything will be reversed. You can reverse your projected image with the remote through the projector's menu options so the projection is oriented correctly. All right, everything set up. Let's turn this baby on and get things started. The instructions here are for Windows 7 or later. If you're using a Mac, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Anyway, you connect a projector to your computer just like a monitor, and Windows should also auto-detect that you have a second display set up. Right-click on your desktop and select Screen Resolution. In the pop-up window, go to Multiple Displays and choose Extend. Windows should simply auto-select the appropriate resolution for both of your displays. I would suggest you auto-hide the taskbar so that you will have as much open space as possible when you open your virtual tabletop application. There are a lot of virtual tabletops out there for you to choose from, but the two most commonly used applications are Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. I tried Roll20, and it's free, but I didn't find it to be very useful and intuitive as Fantasy Grounds was, but that's just my personal preference. Your mileage may vary, and if you like Roll20, feel free to use that application. Don't let me influence you. It's a, it's a good application. It has a lot of great options, especially for mapping, and I can tell you that I use a lot of the Roll20 mapping options to make my maps. I just don't use the application in play. Since I had already paid for the full license anyway years ago for Fantasy Grounds, I chose to use that app. This, is, this was great as the program does a very excellent job of organizing your maps, your NPCs, your notes, and you can hot link everything to your maps and your notes as well. Spawn encounters to the combat tracker instantly through your hot links, and many more things, making access to monsters, NPCs, props, and so on, clutter-free and instantly accessible. So there's more to using this virtual tabletop than just projection. This is actually, as a DM, it's really going to ease your burden significantly. Now, it's simply a matter of placing your maps and so forth in the appropriate folders. The application does an excellent job of creating folders for you when you create the campaign, and you can hot link to these folders right from the application itself. This video is simply about how to set everything up. Detailed use of the virtual tabletop would be a completely different video for another time. So let's just concentrate on setting this up and getting your projection to the table. To begin the session, you first log on to the computer you're using as the DM, and for convenience, I use my laptop. Once the host app is set up, boot the app up on your other computer and log on. You shouldn't have to worry about port forwarding with your Wi-Fi if you're doing everything in-house, and once you set everything up, your router will recognize you in the future. Of course, everyone gets excited about the idea of being able to project the dungeon map onto the table and use your miniatures with it. But you can do so very much more with an LCD projector than that. You can introduce props, show pictures of NPCs or the monsters the players encounter, project an image of your wilderness or city maps as well. The ideas on how to use the projector and the amount of information at your fingertips quickly make your game amazingly immersive. As you play, you will begin to amass a decent collection of maps. Or if you have a scanner, you can import your hand-drawn maps directly as well. Wilderness maps are very easy to come by, and it only takes a few to get things started. I've also found that if things in play don't go as planned, a Google image search can frequently provide the answer during play, and using the hot links to your folders, you can save a web page to the appropriate folder and project it to the table in seconds. And once you have a map, it's there for use whenever you need it at your fingertips, or a mouse click, as it were. Here you can see a fallen tree blocks the progress of our heroes. Crouched and ready to spring, a band of gnolls waits to strike. And the true nature of the situation is revealed by a well-timed perception check. Here you can see the DM's perspective. And the combat tracker is already populated as the DM hotlinked the encounter to the map. If you know that your PCs are going to be traveling, you can have several such random encounters ready to go, and even create a random encounter table with hotlinks for the monsters, so you can add them to the combat tracker instantly. City encounters come alive. Here you can see I've amassed a few generic street maps, 
for city encounters, and this projection shows an alleyway at night. Our intrepid heroes do not yet know what lies in wait for them in the shadows. Of course, dungeon exploration comes alive when using the projector in virtual tabletop software. You're able to show the players a small section which they are currently exploring. The unexplored areas are shaded in. Here, from the DM's perspective, the reason for the host-client setup becomes apparent as you are able to see things in its entirety while only revealing to the players what it is you want them to see. The map on the table moves along as the characters move. No need to stop in a race while players move to the next section. No dry erase or AV markers. Everything is revealed in full and vivid HD color. Note also if you have access to a scanner, you can hand draw your map on graph paper and then scan it to your computer. Here's a hand drawn map of my own, and here it is projected onto the table. Note also I'm using doors to add an additional 3D element as well. You could of course add in pillars or whatever else you like, merging the virtual tabletop projection with real world tangible props. Lastly, let me talk about the application I'm using here just a bit more. Fantasy Grounds is the official virtual tabletop for 5th edition D&D. You're able to get the basic rules for free, though if you want the full write-ups, which provide an astounding amount of information for you, it can get rather expensive. Game modules such as the Lost Mines of Phandelver, with high-quality player maps ready for projection, NPC stats, map pins to encounters, hot links, monster tokens, and everything ready for you can be purchased from the online store. To add the player characters to the combat tracker without having to have a logged-on player and full write-ups in the application... All I did was make them up as friendly NPCs and save them to the appropriate folder. In this way, I can also keep track of the player's hit points and combat conditions quite easily. The players can also open up the combat tracker on the table, though if you do this and there are NPCs the PCs are not aware of, you have the option to make them invisible in the combat tracker. So while the initial setup and learning curve to get started can be a bit daunting, in the end, the fruit of your labors will not only be a visibly pleasing treat for the eyes, but a lessening of the DM's burden with organizational tools that put everything at your fingertips with just a few clicks of the mouse. Well, that about wraps up this video. I hope you found it informative and that it answered many of your questions in regards to bringing the power of the computer to your game in Dungeons & Dragons into the 21st century. If interest in this video is high, then I certainly will do another one that details actual use of the projector in play and demonstrate how it can not only be used for sandbox play, but how it encourages such play and makes it so much easier for the DM. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe. Give me a like, and as always, my friends, may your d20 roll true, and game on.